Well, thank you very much. Um, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to come out and uh, speak with you today. Um, uh, I feel fortunate uh, being able to come out to Michigan um, and address you on a matter of, of national importance uh, and importance for Michigan as well. <clears throat> a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm an attorney in Washington, D.C. I've been doing energy and environmental law for, um, actually, we're coming up on 30 years right now. Um, and I have been working with an organization called the American Legislative Exchange Council, uh, or ALEC. Um, and ALEC has developed a uh, resolution uh, that I understand that uh, is being considered uh, here in Michigan. And I want to talk a little bit about that and the importance of that resolution. <clears throat> the resolution uh, comes out of a situation that we now have in Washington where um, the Environmental Protection Agency in particular has um, been in the process uh, for the last two years of issuing uh, an unprecedented number of really, really uh, stringent regulations. Um, and uh, a lot of people hear mostly about the greenhouse gas and um, global warming side of this. Uh, it's not just that, it is uh, sort of across the board. Uh, one of the uh, central unifying principles of these uh, regulations is to really uh, cut back uh, the nation's use of uh, fossil fuels. Um, and I want to make sure everybody understands that, uh, at least from my point of view, and I know the people at ALEC, this is not, do we want to do more for the environment or do we want to do less for the environment? I think that, that everybody has to understand the very significant progress that this country has made in environmental protection over the last 40 years. Um, there seems to be a view out there that you know we have an environmental crisis in the United States. We have remaining problems in the environment, but we but the air is much cleaner than it used to be. The water is much cleaner than it used to be, and everybody that I know wants to make sure that we continue that progress. So it's not an issue about continuing steadily to reduce emissions. That's what we want to do. The concern here is that we are facing a situation in Washington where the folks that are um, in the Environmental Protection Agency sort of want to do more than that. Uh, in their own words, they want to be transformative. This is a word that they keep using, transform. They want to transform the economy. Uh, maybe the economy needs transforming, maybe it doesn't, but that really is a decision for Congress and the state legislatures to make about what they want to do and how they want to go about doing it. But the concern is that you have an agency that has bought into a vision of a future uh, that they want to bring to pass as soon as possible, uh, recognizing the political circumstances. And, and, and it's because of that uh, that Alec has decided that what needs to happen here is more than just you know, trying to fight this regulation by regulation in Washington, which will happen. Um, but the notion here is the need to try to enlist state help. Um, because after all, all of these things um, have uh, impact out in the states um, and try to channel some of that energy back to Washington so that people in Washington know uh, that there is concern. And that was where the genesis of the idea for uh, a resolution came from. And, and the, the idea was that the state legislatures could speak to Congress and call on Congress uh, to try to uh, put the brakes on what is going on in Washington not to stop environmental regulation forever. We have a whole series of environmental regulations that have been adopted for the last few years that still are in the process of being implemented. The idea is to take a pause to assess where we are and to get the focus back on jobs and the economy. So we have a resolution that has been um, introduced in a number of states. I don't uh, actually have the exact count right now. We're only in early February, but I think it's around 10. Um, it has come out of uh, uh, houses of two states in Indiana and Wyoming. I think in Wyoming it will come out of the second house in, in Wyoming this week. Um, and, um, and so we'll have both houses. It's going to be introduced in a number of additional uh, states as well. So we're, we're trying to um, ask as many states as possible to enlist in this effort. Um, yesterday, I uh, testified uh, at a hearing that um, your own uh, Representative uh, Upton, who's the chair of the House uh, Energy and Commerce Committee, he 
<coughs> had hearings with one of his subcommittees on greenhouse gas regulation. He has a bill that would basically say EPA should not regulate greenhouse gases under the Clean Air Act, but this is something that Congress should consider. Um, it was a pretty amazing hearing. Um, there were at least 10 uh, business uh, organizations that testified, basically the entire industrial economy of the United States, uh, and we had uh, witness after witness going too much, too fast, slow down. We are involved in competition around the globe, and other countries are not requiring this, and if this is imposed on us, we're out of business in the United States. We just can't afford it. It was really amazing to hear uh, all these executives say, you know, we meet with our foreign competition, and they are amazed at how long it takes to get a facility permitted in the United States. Um, uh, India built a giant refinery, a giant, we haven't built a refinery in the United States in 30 years. <coughs> India built a giant refinery, start to finish in three years. And so, you know, we are in a serious competitive situation uh, around the world, and um, we just have to figure out a way to tailor our environmental laws so that we continue environmental progress while at the same time allowing manufacturing to, to proceed. Let me just talk a little bit about some of the regulations. Uh, I, I hope the, the ALEC issued a uh, very detailed report uh, that came out earlier in the week. Uh, I hope you all can get a copy of that. It, I think it just came out Tuesday, maybe Tuesday afternoon, so maybe it hasn't gotten around yet. But there's a detailed report and executive summary, and it basically goes through the regulations one by one. And then there's a very effective chart that they put together. It's like a timeline of all these different regulations um, that they've got and, you know, what the overall impact is. Um, and as I said, greenhouse gas regulation is certainly a foremost part of that. Uh, a lot of people have different views about the science. I only had one science class in college. I don't know anything about the science. But what I do know about greenhouse gases is that there's, the United States, through the Clean Air Act, through EPA, is not going to have the slightest bit of difference on the accumulation of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. There are three billion people in the world today who do not have access to reliable electricity. And if the last 20 or 30 years have taught us anything, what we know is those people are going to get electricity and they're going to get cars and they're going to use an awful lot of energy in the process. And if the United States unilaterally tries to do something about this without enlisting other countries, we, uh, uh, we just uh, put a lot of burden on ourselves without really accomplishing anything. I think even more important is the issue about you know, who gets to decide this. And this has become a very, very big issue of concern in Washington. Uh, because Congress has struggled with this issue. Congress has considered uh, greenhouse gas uh, legislation uh, 20 years, 1990. No, actually, 1988, I think, was the first time that the bill got introduced, and we've never done it. And the reason why we've never done it is because it's very hard. There's a lot of sort of moving parts, a lot of winners, a lot of losers, um, and uh, Congress is still looking at it. Uh, but meanwhile, the Environmental Protection Agency has decided basically on its own initiative uh, to move forward uh, with its regulations, and they have the, the business community in general up in arms about what this is going to do. It's not just greenhouse gas regulations, as I said. There's a whole series of regulations that are being promulgated. Um, you may know we have a system of national ambient air quality standards in the United States for the most sort of ubiquitous, uh, the, the most common pollutants. Uh, there are six standards. Uh, no administration uh, in history has tried to uh, strengthen more than two of those standards at once because it's very uh, complicated, very time consuming. This administration has done all six. There is really serious concern about where they're going on a couple of these standards because of the impact that all of this will have on business. Um, I, I know that a lot of people wonder how it is that the Environmental Protection Agency gets authority to um, do everything that it's doing. It's a very good question. Um, I think uh, what they're trying to do is to basically uh, I, I, you know, push the envelope on their existing authority over environmental protection to say that environmental protection now gets to be about everything. I think they'd be actually gone beyond pushing the envelope. I think they're well outside the envelope at this point in terms of their, 
their authority to do some of the things they're doing. Because it's one thing to have environmental protection and to enforce the nation's environmental laws. It's another thing to take it on yourself to transform the economy. Um, that, that to me, is not something um, that environmental regulators get to decide by themselves. Uh, what we do with the economy at large, balancing environment, balancing the economy, uh, Balancing economic factors, balancing all the different factors that get into that go into where we're going. That's something that environmental protection has to be a part of. But environmental protection is a part of it, and the people who get to make that decision are the people who sit in chairs like you do. And you have to go out and talk to the voters, and you are responsible to them, and you get to hear what they're thinking. And if they don't like what you're doing, you know what happens. So that, that sort of in the end of it is where we are. So, so just to sum up, and, and I'd be happy to take questions. Uh, as I say, we're at, a, we're at a sort of a turning point right now where it's not enough uh, just to say, well, I got a problem with this thing you're doing, or that thing, or this, or that. And there, there just has to be a strong message going back <clears throat> that just says, just, just slow down. You know, we out in the States just need you to slow down pause, let's implement what we've got before we try to, uh, to do too much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Peter, for your testimony.